The devil has an unfair advantage over Holy Spirit Christians today. It's so unfair. He has deceived everyone. He has taken over all the systems of the world. And those of us that love, truly love God in the truth, it's a miracle if we ever find the truth so that we can come out of the delusion and out from under the control of the devil to the living Jesus Christ in the spirit, which is the gift and promise of God to us, the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave his life so that we could be regenerated by the Holy Spirit in our inner person, in our heart. And it gives us a new nature, not to live after the flesh. We live in it, but not after it. And it's so horrible. It's such a deceit today. People think they're Christians and they pretend to be Christians and they emulate and they're trained. They're trained Christians, but they're not born again, Holy Spirit regenerated Christians that truly have the nature of God in them. And it seems like you're trapped either way you go. When you first meet people, if you tell them the truth right up front, they will hate you. They will persecute you. The other night, I was standing with a group of neighbors watching a Christmas parade go down the road because I didn't have anything else to do being alone. And um, one of them started saying, oh, well, you know, the party that they're going to have at this house down the road, uh, the man is really nice, but the woman is snooty. She's religious, but she's snooty. And I thought, that's the way they talk about me behind my back. I must be snooty because I won't partake with them in their sins. And so if you tell them that you're of Christ, then you're snooty and you're, they hate you and they talk about you. But it's worse if you don't tell them and you pretend like you're just like everybody else. And if you just talk to them about natural things, then they'll think you're that you're like them and they will try to get you to do things with them and it will cause you to hurt your uh, relationship with Christ. It'll cause you to break your sanctification. It will cause you to sin and they will want you to partake with them. And so then it's worse when you don't tell them. And so it's a conundrum. What do you do in a world like this? The early Christians, they used to separate themselves off and they would take a stand for their faith in Christ. But today, if you do, you're so outnumbered and you have to live amongst them. What can you do? It's really an unfair advantage the devil has over us today. Of course, the Lord gives us more grace and more understanding, but it is so difficult. And be careful how you use your words when you're talking to sinners. You might just be casually talking to one about something nonchalantly that doesn't really mean a lot. The devil will trap you in your words. It's such a mess, and we don't have the great wisdom and the knowledge to fight against this great fallen spirit that captured us in this evil world in the flesh, but Jesus does have the power to deliver us. And remember this, God is only as good as his word. And so the Bible can't be his word because they twist the Bible to make it say anything they want it to say. And the Bible will let you down in the end every single time. And they will manipulate it and twist it and justify. And you also are as only as good as your word. So if you tell God that you're going to do his will and you're going to serve him, and if you don't do it, then there's something wrong with your heart. Now, I know you have problems with your flesh and you will fail sometimes and you will fall down. But in your heart, you can never, ever leave the living Jesus Christ. You can never ever tell him that you're going to serve him and love him all your life and then go back to the world because then there's something terrible wrong with your heart you need to stick with him even if you do fall you cling to the lord even in your down times and you say lord i don't want to be in this situation i don't want to be contrary to you i love you and i want you and i'm never going to give up i'm never going back to the world if i fall down help me let me get up lord because i don't want to be in this situation this is just a trap of the devil, and I want to walk and talk with you. Never quit clinging to the living Jesus Christ, or then you will be doomed. You are only as good as your word, just like God. When he speaks something to you, like the Bible is an idol, and the Bible is the mark of the beast, and to be led only by him through the Holy Spirit, that word will never change. He is as good as his word. That's why you can trust him. That's why you can depend on him, because he will do what he says he will do. 
the Bible always fails and always lets you down. And so do people. And so you're only as good as your word. So when you give your word to God, then you stick with him and you may not understand everything and you may, may make mistakes in your judgment, but you have to have an honest heart, honest intentions, honest motivations, and then he will correct you. He knows that you didn't know, but if you're facetious, he knows that also. And don't speculate about the things of God. It's okay to wonder and think and uh, about God and the things, but don't speculate in a way that you really believe what you're speculating about. Be sure that when you have something that you're going to cling to in your heart and you're going to say, is God, be sure that it is him showing you that. It's not just conjecture or speculation on your part. Let me read the definition of speculate to you. Speculate, it's a verb. Form a theory or conjecture about a subject without firm evidence. When Jesus spoke to Harlan, the Bible is an idol. That was not speculation. That was not conjecture. It is the word of the living Jesus Christ to our generation. When he told him, I want you just to be a Christian and not to join, what he meant was don't join any of these churches because they're not of him. When he wrote the foundation teachings in his heart, these are true. They've never changed. And so this is not conjecture. This is not speculation. But when you are enlightened to this truth and you come to some understanding about the Bible and about the real covenant of God to us, well, then don't take that truth and that understanding and then go back through the Bible and then figure out everything else for yourself and think you understand everything. That's a terrible mistake because you're doing exactly what Bible worshipers do and you don't even know it. You're figuring everything out for yourself from the Bible through your mind because you learned a truth. Now you think you can figure everything out with your own mind and you can't. You are going to be wrong doing that. And you may get into serious trouble, especially if you say the wrong things about God. Do not do that. You're walking on dangerous ground. And don't just figure that you know everything and that you're going to be able to straighten everybody else out. You need to make sure that you're right with God and that you're walking with God with your heart, right with him, the spirit, and that you're being led by him. He is our Lord. He is our God. He is our master. God is our father, our creator. Jesus Christ is his son, our king, our savior, the one that the father gave us to. And we have to obey him through the spirit. And each one of us must answer to him. We don't answer to other people that think they have it all figured out and are trying to straighten us up. When somebody tells me, he said, oh, well, Jesus showed me this about you. And, you know, it doesn't feel right in the spirit, in your heart. And I say, I think to myself, I say, well, that's strange. I wonder why he showed it to you, but he didn't show it to me. You have to be careful of those things. So be careful, children, in what you believe and what you don't believe. You have to believe in the living God. You have to depend on the living God and the spirit, and he will take care of you. And you can try the spirits by the Holy Spirit that's in you. You can't try the spirits by the Bible because there's 45,000 different denominations, different interpretations of the Bible, and they're all wrong. They're all outside of Christ. So trying the spirits from the Bible, then Satan has a terrible advantage over you because you can never find the truth by trying the spirits through the Bible. You have to know by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will bear witness one way or the other if it's true or not. And if it's if you have to prove it by the Bible, then it's of the devil. The Holy Spirit is the truth. The Spirit is truth. And he you will know by the Spirit he has given you. So the devil has an unfair advantage over us. But remember this one thing as you go through life. No matter how confusing, how messed up things get, remember one thing. Don't go by your head. Go by your heart in the Spirit. Now, I know the heart can have things in it that aren't of God, but the Spirit will bear witness if you indeed are born of the Spirit and you have the Holy Spirit. You will truly know if it's right or wrong, if God wants you to do this or not do this. And so go by what God shows you and you will do well. Do not let the devil 
take advantage of you because he has everybody and everything in this world. Go by the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, not the Bible, not the flesh, not what you think is right by the by other people or by the Bible or by the world standards. Go by what you know is true in the spirit. The Holy Spirit in you will bear witness if something is right or wrong. You may not understand it with your mind, but you will feel it in your heart. So don't let the unfair advantage the devil has over you control you and destroy you and take you astray. Stay with the living Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit and he will guide you home. Your voice will be heard again, Lord. Your voice will be heard again. Light will break forth in the morning to free our soul from within. Your voice will be heard again. Your boss will be heard again. 